Hi, it's Mary Lynn. I worked on a set of a low-budget project recently, and the characters that were around me, that were part of the production team, were crazier than the characters in the project. You have to hear what happened. What's happening today? What are you thinking about? When you're walking down the street, is your head in a cloud? Don't you want to know what's going on? Let's go! Checking in with Mary Lynn. Checking in with Mary Lynn. Checking in with Mary Lynn. Let's check in with Mary Lynn. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, This is a crazy business that I'm in. I think I'm still in it. I don't know. It's called show business. The other day, I got asked to do someone's pilot. Okay? A woman. A comedian. And it was a compliment because it's someone I don't know well. And she put me in her script as myself and she encounters me and I'm bitchy I'm not totally bitchy on the on the uh, page but when I improvised I uh was kind of bitchy and that was fun and um I was basically telling her as myself that you can't be pregnant and in show business because it's a career killer and she and her character as herself a heightened version of herself is like, I'm doing pretty well pregnant. And I was like, yeah, good luck telling yourself that. And then I riffed the whole thing, how she's going down the drain because she's, she's pregnant and she thinks she's doing well. And I said, just wait, wait till you have the baby. Then you're going to be tired and, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to do anything and your body's going to be different. So, um, I just, um, improvised myself into a bitchier version of me and that so that's always fun when you get to put somebody down um and you know when people make things on their own and also I really appreciate that she put the effort in um writing this pilot that was very fun but when you're doing something where it's like a ragtag homemade like we have just enough money to make this legit I like that kind of hustle, that do-it-yourselfness, and you're going to get it done. And you're g- and I totally appreciate someone that's doing shit that they want to do in their own way for themselves and making it happen and making steps to make that happen. Um, having said that, I also think it's a funny thing to do because you're basically... I'm doing it right now. I'm talking and I'm going, I expect you to listen to what I'm saying right now. Like the business of acting and storytelling and making something, it's such an ask of your audience. You know, it's not like a painting where you say, hey, you can walk by this and look at it for a couple minutes and take it in at your own time. I guess music is kind of in between where where you where you're supposed to listen to it from the beginning of the song to the end of the song. But a performance and a um a story like that is is it's a big ask of your audience it's like I, I want you to listen to me and look at my story and what goes into making that is even crazier I mean people put their lives on the line to make this dream happen you know she was using her own home okay so when I got there It was just a mess. So picture you're going to create something, but you're using your house as the setting, as the um, catering, as the wardrobe, as the makeup. Your dog is there. Your kid stuff is there. Your family has vacated because you've decided that you're, you know, it's also the studio your your fax machine is there. <laughs> Come on, guys, I'm kidding. It's the fax. You're doing your paperwork there. You're going to the bathroom next to the catering, next to the your personal stuff. You know, like I I don't you don't know you're and me coming from the outside. I'm doing a favor. I'm doing it because I enjoy supporting people and I'm proud when people make stuff 
and they want to get it done and I'm flattered to be asked and it, it's a funny script. So I'm, I'm like, yes, I'm all in. But again, next thing you know, I'm in her house. There's stuff everywhere. I'm seeing her stuff. I'm going to the bathroom. You know, her tampons are in there, her, her personal bath towels. It's just a strange thing that we do. There's this, uh, a circus vibe to it. And that's not even the right word. Cause I don't know what it's like to be in a circus. There's like a, a haphazard. There's like a boundaryless. Um, there's a chaotic state to doing this, that you're trying to make something out of nothing. And the people that were involved in it are the, it is like being a carnival person because you just show up. I mean, the, the wardrobe, they had to pre pick everything out and they had a concept of certain colors that they, they wanted it to look a certain way. And I had sent my sizes in, but again, it's a very low budget. So I don't know until I get there. And the wardrobe lady was very nice, but very nervous. And then she's next to me and I'm picking up on her nerves and she's saying things that are really polite, but, she, but her vibe is like, I'm about to fall apart in any second. That's her vibe. But she, she's saying like, Oh, uh, so nice to see you here. Like, make yourself comfortable. Like I am not comfortable and you are not helping by saying, make yourself comfortable. You need to make yourself comfortable. Maybe this isn't the right job for you to be surrounded by uh, multiple outfits for different people you haven't met before. And, you know, and I now have to say you did a great job picking stuff out, but the stress that you put yourself through, I'm yes, I'm projecting, but, um, you know, she's giving me this dress and I'm going and I'm moving stuff around in the bathroom and there's nowhere to hang it. And, I, and it's a dress I would never wear. And it's, a little bit over the top. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. And she's like, oh, I think it's, I think it's really cute. I think I could really work on you. I could really, I really, uh, you know, if you're not comfortable in it, it's okay if I touch you. It's okay if I, it's like, you, yeah, your job is to touch me. Like just fucking do your shit, man. Don't ask me every three seconds out of politeness because that's now not politeness. That's a nervous tick. Okay. How do you have to put the belt on it? If you think, no, put the fucking belt on it. Like, I don't know. It's your job. You know, and I have problems. I, I say it's your job, but I want you to be confident and convince me and for you to be solid. And then it's my job to complain anyway. You know what I mean? I get to say, yeah, I'm not comfortable in this. But now that you're like double negativing me out of you're so nervous about me being comfortable that I have to do the bare minimum. I can't assert myself because I feel like you might fall apart any second. And I don't really care. It's your choice. And again, we didn't have the luxury to talk over what the look for this is or, is or anything. And I'm in someone's bathroom and this woman is, um, is that is okay if I, oh, I try that. I think the other one is really cute. I think that could really work. And I'm like, yeah, great. Sounds good. And I said, put a scarf. It's okay if I touch. How you put it like this? It could be like, I don't know. I just, just put it on. Just do the thing. And uh, then at one point, there were a bunch of cast members in and around this very small space. You know, it's, it's they're within steps of each other. And people are changing in front of each other. And these guys, it was like two to three guys who were also playing characters and also, you know, a producer walking in and out. And there's a little dog and the makeup lady is there. And there's old chips from the morning next to the coffee, next to the guacamole, next to the mini bagels and mini coffee cakes and weird chunks of cheese that are just laying out. And these guys are talking and then they leave and the wardrobe lady turns to me and she goes, Oh man, Oh, you must love being able to have some privacy now. And it's like, I don't like, please stop talking to me. I, I am fine. You are not fine. And you're putting your shit on me because you need privacy. In fact, maybe you need a whole other vocation because I'm worried about you. And while she's saying that to me, she's taping her hand Again, maybe not good for your trade that involves uh, having your, your fine motor skills and moving things and touching people. And she's kind of uh, uh, absentmindedly 
<laughs> taping her hand and is like, I don't really want to know. It begs the question, do you have an injury? It's a little bit on the precipice of the guy I was driving near my house the other day. And this is a pretty major street. Um, and, you know, it's like a two lane with a median and two lanes going the other way. And there's this homeless guy who's sitting on the curb and his feet are out in the road and he has his ankles crossed like he's just relaxing but meanwhile you're like your legs are actually that this is not a chair the and the your legs are in the street so you're basically begging to be run over but you're doing it your vibe is like fuck you man like I'm just relaxed in my living room so there's this edge of um you are so aggressively in pain that you're now putting someone else in a dangerous spot where they might run over your legs because your legs are where they are not supposed to be. Um, and that's how I felt about her taping her hand. It's like, I am worried about you and I shouldn't be in a position to be worried about you. And you are aggressively putting your injury in front of me. And that's not fair because you haven't been able to get help in your life. And so now you're involving the general public. I mean, it's a little bit def different because this is a specific, it's even more acute because I'm in a, um, work working relationship with you. Like, I don't know. Is it an open wound? Is it pussy? Yeah. Just tape that shit up for everyone to see, but act like it's not happening. <laughs> like everyone can see you taping your hand up right now. Uh, and then the makeup lady, Everyone had their own little thing. She's looking at me, and then this is my pet peeve. Well, first of all, they try to act like there's some magical mystery to it. They'll be like, do you have any moisturizer on? Are you allergic to anything? I mean, which is nice. They, sh they need to be sensitive, but it's also like, yes or no, I have moisturizer on. I, wh what does it really matter? Or like, if I look oily right now, I look... It's just a very interesting little tiny moment that usually happens. And then I said, yes, I have moisturizer on. And she's like holding something like a sponge and she's staring at me. She goes, may I remove it? And I was like, no, but what? And she has like astringent and she's, she wants to like wipe my face down so she can start from a clean slate. <laughs> it's like, bitch, I'm playing myself. Like just work with this. Don't try to take my moisturizer off. Like you fucking weirdo. Just, uh... But of course, at first I said no. And she was like, no? And I was like, yeah, no. And then she was like, no, but I was just going to. And then I was like, okay. And then it turned out she did have a gentle touch. And she was not. Sometimes I just like press and like scrape, you know, like I had a little mascara on. And that was my fear that she was going to be like, can I take the mascara off? It's like, no, just fucking. It's not a big, big look, you know? This is not a period piece on a Steven Spielberg film that you're going to have to match. I'm going to be here for an hour outside playing myself. But, you know, she has her process. I respect it. And then, thank God, after that moment, I was expecting the worst. But she totally had a gentle touch, and she just, it felt nice. She just did a little astringent, which I never use in my real life. And then she was like, and I would have put a primer on. Like, okay, yeah, put the primer on which again was fine. I always fear for the worst because this person is up in your space and, and you don't know what they're going to do. So she just put a little bit, I needed it guys. So I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I needed a little primer because my cheeks were a little bit red and the primer is a little bit green and she did not overload it. And then she put a little foundation on again, a light touch. But then on the other hand, she was also straddled over me at one point and she made a side comment about like, am I pressing on your face or like touching your resting sometimes like b fucking balance on your nose to like do their work. And so someone must have said something to her at some point, you know, at one point she's like holding my head to like get, and she's straddling. So her crotch is over my thigh and it's like, really the straddle J just to get to my face. <laughs> like, can you, um, but it's hard because, you know, 
she cared about her work. She has her own method and she did a very nice job. Funny enough, she completely ignored my eyebrows. So she spent an inordinate amount of time telling me how she likes to blend it so it looks like it's not there. Meanwhile, it's like she's just pressing and pressing and pressing on my eyelid over and over again. She's like, I use three different colors to make it look like it's not there. And I'm like, cool, great. It looks great. And it did. It looked fine. It looked pretty. But like no brows, which my brows is like the first thing I do. But you know what I did in that moment? I was like... It's fucking perfect, man. And I didn't touch my brows and it's fine. And then she had a very funny uh, method to my, to uh, uh, my, doing my hair. Now I'm going to say something. She used a very thick pomade. Like my hair is baby fine. And I don't know what her background was. It was some sort of Hispanic. Her hair was thick and gorgeous. And I was like, bitch, yeah, you use pomade on your fucking hair because you have a mane, right? So you can afford to like pomade that shit. And then like you're pushing it in a direction and then your hair falls over it because you have extra hair because you have big, beautiful hair. You're going to put pomade in my fine ass, like white, like I don't have that much hair. You're going to put some sticky, crazy ass shit on my scalp that is is not a good look for mommy (laughs) and then she said something hilarious which was like I don't know what I'm gonna do with your hair I'm gonna wait till you get dressed (laughs) like come up with the inspiration like great I've never heard of that before but it's like you're a Van Gogh or something I gotta get in the room and just (laughs) feel the texture of your dress in order to come out with your hair okay and then some weird and I I just took it I took the pomade so I was like I it's fine uh again if I knew I was gonna have to come back the next day and play that character I would have been like get her away from me get her crotch away from me and like did like her primer and her astringent though I have to say but yeah you don't you don't put pomade on my hair okay let that be a warning my favorite part would have to be though and by the way everyone was nice and they got the job done but I do think I know for a fact at least one to two of these people were from Craigslist I don't know if the, <laughs> the god bless these people are on the hustle and I I don't mean to sound disrespectful because I'm not but I'm allowed to have my own experience and if I had my thigh straddled I had my thigh straddled okay and I took it um the she also told me like how tired she was which is also a no-no of course I was like egging her on I'm like oh man and she's like drink so much coffee and I was on another shoot last night again I respect the hustle and she like drove somewhere far away to get to this shoot at the crack of the dawn and only had two hours sleep because she was working on another job. It's not easy. And it's, there's never any guarantee that it will pay off. And these people are doing it because they love um, what they do and they want to tell stories and they want to work in this business. So I get it. And maybe, you know, she does have that confidence where she's like, I'm going to hit this with some pomade. She has the confidence to get it done. And I like that. Maybe not the experience to, no to not touch my hair actually I should have told her in that moment because then she would have known to not use a pomade but you know what a missed opportunity I was distracted by her crotch on my thigh what can I say and I just was like you want to pomade me (laughs) go for it but my favorite part was um I think I get a deferred payment of $125 for this production and my poor agent (laughs) Since I told him I'm not taking legitimate auditions anymore, he's like, great. He's like tr- trying his best to negotiate. And then I was told, I think he forgot to tell me or either he forgot or I just wasn't listening, that he negotiated them instead of a self-drive to come and pick me up and take me to the set. And I was like, oh, I'm so fancy. Yeah, I'll take it. You come and pick me up. But the person that picked me up was um, this guy who... 
answered an ad in Craigslist because he said it was on his bucket list, but not really a bucket list because he didn't expect he was going to die, but that to work on a set. So he came and picked me up in his own car, which again, I could tell that he tried to clean it, but it's still like the seat was covered in dog hair and there was just, you know, like the stains of in a car where you know this is an inherently just dirty car that they've just picked up that first layer of trash and put it aside. Nice guy, friendly guy. Again, with the nervousness though, like, hi, like just didn't really know where he was or what he was doing. And, um, told me he was a screenwriter and I was like, perfect. Let's talk about it for an hour. And, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm pretty judgmental. So I was like, yeah, you're probably not making a living as a screenwriter since you are, you have the time to drive. Um, I don't know. I just, none of the screenwriters I do would ever drive somebody for free to some, like that would be like a fucking nightmare to people who are writers that they would want to spend 12 hours being in this chaotic atmosphere. That would be like something that would make, someone crazy who's a writer um but this guy was like I'm just a curious person you know and I said what do you write and he's like well just all genres really I was like oh boy here we go he's like I, yeah, I like it all but you know in LA they try to box you in I'm like yeah in LA in order to get something done you need to have a specific story you want to tell is that is that the box <laughs> of specificity and he said, I like it all. You know, people say I should do a horror movie, so I guess that's what I should do. And I'm like, I don't know what this guy is talking about, you know? And then he said he tried to make, maybe they someone was trying to give him advice to sell, do a horror movie because then his next thing was, yeah, I did a comedy, but it turned out it wasn't a comedy. So he wrote some film or made some film, and he said, yeah, I thought comedy was about lighting, and, and how you frame the scene. I was like, no, it's really probably comes from the writing. You have to write something funny. If you want it to come out funny, you can't light something funny. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could, who am I to say, but, uh, it, that there's a, I'm sure there is a funny way to light something, but I would say that, um, is dead wrong in how comedy works. He's like, yeah, there's so many ways a scene can be shot and interpreted. No, that, that would be your job to dictate the way that you want the scene to be interpreted would call the meaning, be the meaning of the film, the purpose, the story of it. I don't know. Um, but he said because of his natural curiosity, he was um, going to get an RV and, and drive around and have no responsibilities and... Um, I was like, yeah, your, your natural curiosity on how to not make a living. Yep. That's you. That's one way to call it. I mean, maybe I'm just a see you next Tuesday. You know, that shows you what I value, but I'm like, Hey, how about just get a job? Um, and he's like, yeah, I might, I might just take all of our money and buy an RV. The wife and I, you know, we just love exploration. And to me, that just sounds like we just love poverty and avoiding responsibility. Translation. Um, and he said, you know, I know you get an RV, the value of it's going to go down and you try to resell it. You probably are going to lose money, but you know, money doesn't exist anyway. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, a good thing to tell yourself when you don't have any money to try to make yourself feel better. How's that working out for you? And if it really didn't exist and you wouldn't have brought it up in the first place, you would have just been moving through the world like a ghost, not needing any material objects. Oh. Yeah, money's the thing that you buy food with. Does food not exist too? You just live on a higher plane of ideals. What a beautiful thing, man.
we all have our own realities, you know? And this guy, he's he just wants to go have those experiences. And if, if I learned anything from this is that I don't want to be in that reality. I like my little house and my pet and believing that money is a real thing. I like having standards and taking care of myself. And, you know, if I ever hurt my hand, I'm just going to wrap it up on my own time. And, um, you know, you're in wardrobe. Why not wear some fashionable gloves so I don't have to see your fucking injury and wonder if I'm going to catch a disease from you touching me close to my breasts. And just because you ask permission doesn't mean I'm not going to catch what you have. So I'm going to go be tested. Um, and I'm still washing the dog hair from, uh, that, uh, driver's seat. And I still have a little bit of the feeling of her crotch on my leg, but, um, you know, that was my experience to have. And did I do a good job acting as myself? bet your ass I did. Did I do an even better job having an experience of a bunch of Looney Tunes being around me and getting in my personal space? So sometimes that's what it's about, you know? That's the takeaway. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>